I love that little term in the Bible, the voice of the Lord. Now, I've never heard God's voice audibly, but there's a whole lot that the psalmist says today about the voice of the Lord. I wonder why. Listen in and find out. Welcome to Everyday Truth with Kurt Skelly. We believe the Bible is true and relevant to everyone, everywhere, every day. If today's conversation is a help to you, take a moment to leave a review or share it with a friend. Thanks for listening. Now, let's join Kurt for today's episode. Okay, team, I'm back. Here I am in our studio at the Faith Baptist Church. I'd love to show you our property. If you've never been here to Virginia, we are halfway to everywhere in the world. So if you're ever on Interstate 95, which I wouldn't even wish upon my worst enemy, but if you're ever on Interstate 95 and you're traveling south of D.C. about one hour, uh, you're right near us. We'd love to meet you and have you come to a church service or at least maybe get a cup of coffee. So thanks for listening. And I hope to, hope to meet, meet you face-to-face one day, if I've not done so already. We're in Psalm 29, and we're in uh, another Psalm of David. This Psalm is so refreshing because it's just straight praise. A lot of times when you read a Psalm, you'll read a progression. You'll read about a problem and a calling out to God, and then a solution, maybe an understanding of God's character in a greater way, or a specific answer to prayer, and then praise. So you see that progression. We saw that last Psalm. But in Psalm 29, we don't see that progression. Whatever it was, David just begins and ends the Psalm with great praise. And you find throughout the Psalm David just praising God, reiterating the name of God, talking about the voice of the Lord. And I find that interesting because when you read, you're not hearing the voice of the Lord. When you, you're you praying, you hear your voice, but you're not hearing God's voice. And yet David speaks about the voice of the Lord. And I love that because I think that implies a, a real relationship. Because when, when you hear somebody's voice back in the day when there was before there was FaceTime and you were separated from your loved ones, you'd call them on a telephone and just to hear someone else's voice, there's something unique about a voice. It just brings that person closer, doesn't it? And David talks about God's voice throughout Psalm 29. Look at verse number one where he says, Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty, Give unto the Lord glory and strength. So David begins this psalm of praise by saying to the mighty ones, you ought to give God strength or or praise for, for, for his strength. Isn't that what it says? Give unto the Lord glory and strength. I think sometimes when we are mighty in this life, mighty by comparison, obviously no one is mighty next to God, But does some people have more strength and more power and more wisdom and more talent than other people? Some scholars even believe that David was speaking to the mighty angels here. But to whomever or about whomever he was speaking, David is saying we should never be to the place in our lives where we're we're so full of ourselves or so conscious of our own might that we don't realize that glory and strength belong to God and God alone. Anything that I am, any strength that I have, any resources that are mine have come because of God anyway. So David's very careful to encourage the mighty to praise God for who he is. Uh, It was Jeremiah that said, let not the rich man glory in his wisdom or in his riches or that it is wealth. Let that the wise man glory in his wisdom. You know, glory in the fact that you know the Lord. And so what a good reminder, isn't that? Verse number two, give unto the Lord the glory. I love this, do his name, D-U-E, do unto his name, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Give God his due. Reminds me of those great verses in Romans chapter 13, 
where it says that we're to give honor unto whom honor is due. And that's true of even human beings. We're to give honor in that context. It was even government officials. And so there's something good about using respect when it comes to our authorities and civil government. But how much more should we give honor and glory to God, who is the highest authority, who deserves the most glory, who has never in in any way abused or misused his office? So give honor that's due, give glory that's due to the Lord. And then it says, worship the Lord. That means to bow down, to humbly prostrate ourselves before him, to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. What a statement. Four times in the Bible, you'll find a direct reference to the beauty of holiness. What does that mean? That means there's something utterly attractive about the holiness of God. We don't typically think about those words going together, beauty and holiness. And yet there is something very beautiful about holiness. The the character, the unchanging character of God is beautiful. The fact that he's reliable, how beautiful. The fact that he's loving and it's a pure, unadulterated love, how beautiful. The fact that He's righteous and holy without admixture of error or tainted with wrong motivation or evil intention. How beautiful. And when you think about the set-apartness and the character of Almighty God, it ought to speak to beauty. And that's what the psalmist is saying. Verse number three, the voice of the Lord. There it is. He's going to talk about the voice of the Lord several times now. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Cedars were the big, large trees of Lebanon. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. He maketh them also to skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian like a young unicorn uh, or a young wild ox would be what a unicorn was. The voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire, the lightning that comes down, that, that seems to be divided as it descends from the clouds. That The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The voice, uh, the Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord maketh the, the hinds to calf and discovereth the forests, and in his temple doth everyone speak of his glory. So what what is the psalmist saying? The psalmist is saying, wherever you look, whether it's on the mountain, whether it's in the forest, whether it's in the desert of Kadesh, whether it's out in the ocean, whether it's uh, among people, or whether it's in the temple, No matter where the voice of God is, and it's everywhere, the voice of God is everywhere. Everywhere you go, you can hear the voice of God. In his creation, we hear his voice. In his word, we hear his voice. God is communicating in every place we sense the very presence and word of God, we see power. That's the point power. The Word of God is more powerful than any earthly resource. The Word of God is more powerful than the most powerful things that the people of that day could imagine. The thunder and the lightning and the ocean and the desert and the mountains, whatever it was, they were all playing subparts to the power and the main role of the Word of God in their lives, the voice of the Lord. Boy, that's the attitude we ought to have. The Word of God, the God of the Word, the God that speaks, that's the voice of God. The God that speaks through His Word, this is powerful. It says in Hebrews chapter 4, you know the verse, the Word of God is quick. That means it's alive, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And of the joint and marrow, it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. But God's word has great power in the physical universe. 
I mean, it was by God's voice, by God's word, that he spoke things into existence. The word of God is responsible for the creation that we see. But not only is the word of God powerful way out there in big ways, but then Hebrews tells us the word of God is powerful way in here in the most subtle ways, in the smallest ways, ways that you might only know in your heart what God has done through his word in your life. And the psalmist just says, the voice of the Lord, the voice of the Lord, the voice of the Lord, whether it shouts or whether it whispers, whether it creates or whether it convicts, the word of God is powerful in our lives. What a poetic way to say it. Uh, You might want to just take some time and reread that sometime soon just to see the power of the Word of God and then to think that all that power is right there for us at our fingertips. We can just turn it on on our phone or on our iPad or open up the the book and uh, just just wend through the pages and hear it in sermons or on an audio version. I mean, we have the Word of God available to us. Wow. Look at verse number 10 of our text. The Lord sitteth upon the flood, the waters. Yea, the Lord sitteth king forever. How powerful is God? He sits. When you sit, that means the work has been done. When you sit, that means that you are the sovereign. He sitteth king for how long? Forever. God is in control. God is the sovereign. God is powerful. And that will never, ever, ever end. And then the very last verse of our psalm, Psalm 11, uh, Psalm 29 and verse 11, the Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Now, don't you love how David builds this whole thing up for 10 verses? The voice of God, the power of God, the character of God, all the things we've talked about. And then at the very last verse, he pivots and says this, the Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. So what is the purpose of God's power? Is God just powerful to show off the big muscles that he has? No, God's power has a purpose, and God's powerful purpose is you and me. God wants to show his strength in my life. God wants to show his strength in your life. God wants to show his strength to bring peace in my life. Remember the waves and the winds, how powerful they were, but God sits on the waves. God sits on the flood. God sits over his creation. And he can say to them, peace, be still, and the winds and the waves will obey him. So God's power, yes, it's an awesome thing. Yes, it's a scary thing, but God's power is for our good. And God's power is what gives us strength. And God's power is what gives us peace. So take heart today as you go to school as you go to your workplace, as you think about that big looming problem in your life, we serve a God of power. And that power is practical for your life. 